Word Wednesday. Happy Word Wednesday, church family. <laughs> Rox is excited. Maggie's excited. The star of the show, Candace, my wife, is asleep. So it's just a solo show today. I apologize. I know. I know. It's not as exciting when it's just Nate. I know. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Um, we got in late last night from our long trip from Florida. We flew from Fort Lauderdale. I don't know why airlines do this. We flew from Fort Lauderdale up to New York City, JFK Airport. Then we flew from JFK Airport to like a five hour flight to Phoenix. Long day of travel. So she's resting peacefully. We're gonna let her rest this morning. You get me this morning. We get to be in front of the Christmas tree. We're gonna talk about eternal joy this morning. It's super exciting. Why don't you turn your Bibles with me to Psalm 16. We're gonna dive right in this morning. It's Word Wednesday. It's great to be back in Arizona. Although Florida was nice, muggy, beautiful here. Always good to be home. We're gonna talk about home a little bit today, what home means. And we're gonna talk, so today is November 29th. I would always try to look up a little factoid about November, the day that we're talking about. And maybe you've noticed. But today, on November 29th in 1898, exactly 125 years ago, a famous author, uh, C.S. Lewis was born. Maybe many of you know who he is. He's very famous for a uh, fantasy series that I loved growing up. I read to Kyle when we were kids called The Chronicles of Narnia about Aslan the Lion. It's a great allegory for Christianity. But he also authored about 40 other books on Christianity. So, uh, some other famous ones might be The Screwtape Letters or a famous book called Mere Christianity. And there's a quote from C.S. Lewis that I'd like to share with you today. And it coincides with our scripture, and it coincides with eternal joy. And uh, the quote comes from your Christianity, and it says this, If I find myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. If none of my earthly pleasures satisfy it, that does not prove that the universe is a fraud. Probably, earthly pleasures were never meant to satisfy it, but only to arouse it to suggest the real thing. And we're going to talk about the real thing today. So that's a very famous C.S. Lewis quote, saying, If I find my, a desire with no, which no experience in this world can satisfy, so he's talking about living on this earth, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. I think we can all agree with that, right? So let's turn to our Bibles, Psalm 16, 9, uh, 9 through 11. No wonder my heart is glad and I rejoice. My body rests in safety, for you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. Wow, that's awesome. So true joy, even as C.S. Lewis presents it, is the ache for something beyond this world. You guys ever feel that? An ache for something beyond this world? I feel it every day. The Holy Spirit uses this restlessness to awaken spiritual hunger. So that's a good thing. True eternal joy means nurturing a deep longing for God. The more time we spend with Him, the more we gain great revelations of God's character, His love, and of heaven itself. When we identify with heaven as our true home, that's key to this whole thing. You know, we say, oh, you know, we're, we're going to go home for the holidays a lot this time of year. Or there's no place like home, right? Well, that's true. Especially if we change our perspective to think that home isn't Phoenix, Arizona. Home isn't Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Home is in heaven. Our home, going home, is our eternal glory. And that's important to remember. I lost myself. When we identify with heaven as our true home, the more joy we have in our relationship with God. And the cycle of longing builds exponentially as we chase after God for the rest of our lives. So the more we chase after God, the more the joy of his presence replaces any of these earthly joys that we have. In Christmas, let's be honest, this in our culturally and societally, it's very materialistic. It's about the earthly pleasures. It really is. It's, it's kind of I mean, we talk about a church, it's the meaning of Christmas, is Jesus being born. I lost my notes. Sorry. Coming down to earth, taking the, the form of man, dying for our sins on a cross, 
resurrecting three days later for the penalty of our sins so that we can have that eternal glory. So being in a relationship with God provides an eternal perspective. And that's really, when we do devotionals today in the morning, when we do our devos every morning, when Maria on Mondays, yesterday we had PT give a great word on just sunrises and what it means to not be in the dark and to be in the light. And then Ron G tomorrow on Thursdays and then PT or someone on Fridays. It's just a great team and we want to encourage you every morning. It's building these spiritual disciplines because the more we are in relationship with God, the more we are away from those earthly joys, those earthly pleasures and more in the pleasures of Him. I love that. The time we spend with Him, in other words, begins to cure our hearts of fear. That's huge. That's another big point. Especially the paralyzing fear of losing people or things precious to us. A flat tire on our brand new car, right? <sighs> we lose that fear. The closer we get to God, the more he replaces the fleeting temporary earthly joys with eternal heavenly joys. That's the joy we're talking about, that eternal joy today. And that's why we sing, uh, there's a famous Christmas carol, Joy to the World. You guys remember? Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive a king. You know, it's just a great song. We hear, we hear it every Christmas, and maybe we just even forget what we're even singing about. Jesus is the joy to the world, and the, the more we're in relationship with God and Him, the closer we are to that heavenly joy that He wants us to have, the joy of being in His presence. And it's important to remember this time of year, especially around Christmas. He is our true joy. He is our true light. Real quickly, I know I've gone too long. I usually do. But here are Fire Bible footnotes, as always. I love this right here. God's people should pursue and cherish above all else a more intimate relationship with him. His continual presence at our right hand brings guidance, protection, resurrection, and as we learn in verse 11, eternal pleasures, eternal joys. And that's what we're after, those eternal joys. Amen? Let's stay focused on that this season. I'm going to pray with you guys. I'm going to see who's on. We're going to get on with this awesome day. All right, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your reminder today. We thank you for your word. Thank you that it, it reminds us that you, in relationship with you, God, we find our true purpose, our true joy, that eternal blessing, that eternal glory, that eternal joy, God, that we are so after. And God, we rem, we're reminded through C.S. Lewis, God, that that longing, uh, that this isn't it for us. There's another world. There's something better for us after this. And we know that's true because your word is true. And everything in this word has come true. So we rely on it, God. We lean into it today. We focus and refocus our energy and our minds on your delights, what brings you joy and the joy that we feel when we're with you, God. Not when we're separated from you. Not when we're in our own earthly desires. So keep us centered on that today. We love you. And we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, a thousand apologies if you're just tuning in. It's just Nate, not Nate and Candace. Candace did such a great job last Wednesday talking about anxiety and gratitude. I mean, that was a, I've still been thinking about that one. So she's sorely missed, but she'll be back next week, I'm sure. Well, love you guys. I'm going to see who's on as you look at the Christmas tree. I did have a partner in crime today. Her name's Maggie, and she's just so sleepy down there. Maggie, are you so sleepy? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a belly rub. <laughs> Heavenly pleasures of belly rubs. <laughs> awesome. Okay, let's use on. Hey, Albert. Hey, Christine. Uh, RJ, Georgia. Thank you. Yeah, it's a beautiful tree. Candace does all of our decorating. We got Rose. Good morning. Good morning, Ron G. Marion. Family. Great to have you guys on. Good morning, Deb. Good morning, Sylvia. Good morning, church family. Amen. Hi, Mary. Hi, Joe. Hey, Deb. Love C.S. Lewis. Yeah. Today he was, 125 years ago, C.S. Lewis was born. Hey, Karen. Hey, Ivy. I'm a little stuffy this morning. Hopefully I didn't get any sick on the plane. Hey, Maria. Great job on Monday, as always. Hey, Alfredo. Uh, Mary, I'll let Candace know that you miss her. I miss her. I'm going to go jump on her. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Everyone who's in, Janice, Eva, Sylvia, Danny, you guys are awesome. Ramiro, great to have you guys, as always. You're the best Devo team, the best Devo family. You guys are awesome. Hope you have a wonderful day in Jesus. Have a great Wednesday, a word Wednesday. Remember to focus on the eternal joys that are coming, not just the earthly ones. Love you guys. Have a great day.